Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions. Today we're going to do a creator request, which is where a smaller band gets in contact with me and asks me to check out their stuff. Today we got one from Past the Falls. It says, hey Brian, hope you're having a good day. My name's Thomas and I wanted to see about getting one of our songs reacted to. Let's start by saying I'm a fan of your channel and think your work is really great. Well, thank you. My band is Past the Fall from England. We released our first album independently. It's been well received within the rock and metal community, but due to self-promotion and a low marketing budget, hasn't received a lot of coverage and we're hoping a reaction will help. So yeah, let's get into this. I'm excited. I'm always excited. I'd like to see what new bands are doing. So the track is called Beholden. Let's see what Past the Fall is bringing to the table today. Just really get into this rule of cool. Just it sounds awesome. Powerful vocals. I like the drummer keeping that splash symbol rolling pretty much all the time, really filling in the space. Beautiful, beautiful line. Like the, we have a chord change, a chord progression here as well. Variation on the melody written for the vocals. Been holding that up their sleeve. A little bit of a key shift there. I love this chorus so much. I really do. Oh, that 
little bit of modulation there, coming in a bit late. Yeah, pulling that triple it out and, and delaying that. really interesting track because uh, I'd say that the verse and bridge kind of embody one style of metal um, I'm not sure the exact genre name but it's what I think of when I think of like that that uh, that typical 90s metal but the bridge is almost grungy And I, I, maybe that's just what I, I love about it, but also just like we'll get into there's so, so many good moments in that that chorus. Um, but it's just it's so interesting. Usually with bands like this, even when we get to a chorus, they'll still stick to that really texture based uh, writing for the chorus. And instead we go to something that's wildly melodic, just really shift into the other side of the spectrum. And it's cool to hear both sides come out of the same band, come out of the same song. Uh, so yeah, just, I'm digging this. I really am. Um, we have a trio. Our bassist is our lead vocalist, does our harsh vocals and some cleans. Our guitarist does backup cleans. Although I don't even know if I can call them backup. When he comes in, it is just a secondary vocal track. It is counterpoint. It's a second lead. Um, but that's just this track. I don't know how often they, they aim for that. And then our drummer is just a drummer. He's the only person uh, carrying a single duty. But the drummer's got some neat tricks up his sleeve. And we'll talk about in a bit. Now, as I already mentioned, our verses and bridges are primarily designed around a singular idea, which is rule of cool. It's that, that textural writing. Does this sound awesome? Let's do it. Um, and we comprise that of a one bar riff primarily with a lick at the uh, in our fourth bar to put a little variation in the cap off a four bar phrase. This is how, uh, like I said, the verse and the bridge are written. Our drums are primarily sitting in the pocket. They're giving us that, that backbeat, they're giving us the, the heartbeat of the song, keeping us in time, giving us the time signature, and uh, you know, really holding down the song, creating that foundational element where our uh, guitar and bass are giving us this driving momentum, this energy. And all of this is paired with these interesting harsh vocals and that they're they're narrow and pointed, almost like what I think of the stereotypical black metal one, black metal harsh. But there are times when the vocalist can widen out the sound. It still has that that nasally compression, but it's it's wider. It's not as as po as pointed as focused, um, and it kind of gets a little bit of that power that a more traditional like metalcore scream, a modern metalcore scream would have. And it's just really interesting to hear the vocalist have control over the width of this specific tone. It's not like he changes to a different type of harsh, or maybe it does, just the timbre is very similar. But it's 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 wild. Like the pitch, the 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 shape of it, the the sound of it are all the same. Just kind of changes how wide and, and narrow it is. I can't say I've heard of any vocals doing that before. But, uh, yeah, just kind of bonkers. Was not expecting that. Especially to be paired with this music. I mean, it works really well. But with the guitar work that, that brought us into it, I wasn't expecting that type of vocal. Like I said, I, I primarily associate that more with um, black metal. And maybe some, uh, 
some of the stuff that's like blurring the lines between thrash and black and but definitely more extreme types i think this is a very palatable metal it, it feels very early to me it doesn't feel extreme but the vocals certainly are borrowed i would say or maybe influenced by more extreme styles of vocal work again two things i wasn't really expecting to be smashed together now this brings us to should we talk about the intro first there's a cool thing going on in the intro. Let's let's talk about the intro real quick. Really cool thing going on here. It was in 4-4 four, four, like the rest of the track, but given the rhythmic ideas going on in the drums, <laughs> I naturally counted it in five. I felt a five polyrhythm against the four. And uh, I counted in my head. I was like, yeah, you know, this is in 4-4, four, four, but that's not the one that feels most natural to me. It feels like five hits in a bar. So I just thought that was really cool. I don't know if they intentionally did that. They might have just said, hey, this rhythm sounds great, and they recorded it, right? Um, maybe they knew exactly what they were doing, and they tossed some polyrhythm in there. But, well, is it polyrhythm, though? It, I guess it depends on intent. If they wrote it in 4-4, four, four, but there's five dominant beats, it's polyrhythm. But if they wrote it in 5-4, that's not polyrhythm. That's just a different time signature. So yeah, I guess it depends on intent. But given the entire song was in 4-4, I'm going to assume our intro was as well. And it was just, it caught me off guard to be introduced to this in 5. I really thought we were going to explore some more time signatures because of that. But uh, I'm just, I'm kind of thinking it was more of a one-off. It was a cool rhythm. They, they introduced the song with it. It just happened to uh, to push against the 4 but still, a cool intro. Caught me off guard. I'm always down for that. Um, and this brings us to the chorus. So this is my favorite part of this song. We shift from these single bar riffs that don't change, they don't move in pitch, to this four bar chord progression. And it's descending, if I remember correctly. We start from a higher uh, a chord with a higher top note, and we continually bring it down feels like we're descending the staircase. Um, and while we're doing that, we have these two vocal lines, completely different things. They end up on the fourth bar doing the same thing. So we have this nice harmony in our final bar, but our first three bars, they're sort of uh, pushing against each other's rhythmic phrasing. Um, the drums have chilled out a little bit and given us a bit more of a, a laid back drum riff. And our bass is actually providing a little bit of counterpoint to our two vocals by having these uh, moving lines at the end of every bar. It's like uh, it's like two eighth notes at the end of every bar that augments what our chordal thing is doing. We continue this descent and we kind of rise up and descend again and rise up and descend. But it's also this little narrative all on its own that is sitting outside of what our two vocals are doing. And it's just, it is a gorgeously layered moment you know if we're not having a lot of a lot of instruments here we have two vocals and a guitar and a bass the drums are purely rhythmic at this point um so we have we have four pitched instruments here and they just find the best way to combine them um and i absolutely love it and it's also a nice contrast as well we're not just moving from that that textural stuff to uh melodic stuff or even the harsh vocals to the clean vocals, but we're also shifting from faster stuff to slower stuff. This is moodier. It doesn't necessarily like feel like a full-on halftime idea, but you know, there's just less attacks going on in the guitars, in the vocals. It's and it almost I don't know, like I said, it still kind of gives me a grunge feel, but maybe I'm wrong on that. Genres aren't really my expertise. I'm still learning them. But it's just so different from everything else. And I, I love it. That that layered approach is certainly my jam. And, you know, my, my gut instinct says I want more of this. You know, give me a whole song of this. But I think it really is the contrast that makes it stand out, that elevates it. So... I think if we just had a whole song of it, I'd enjoy it for sure, but it stands out more so because of what's surrounding it. And there is one thing surrounding it that we haven't talked about yet, 
And that is, of course, the guitar solo. What's really cool coming into the bridge is that we just heard this melody out of the guitarist's uh, vocal line. And the guitarist takes this and starts off the guitar solo the same way. This is a beautiful way to transition between two ideas and connect them, making the composition very fluid. It almost feels like we're just trading off from one lead instrument to another with the same melody line, but after like three or four notes, we slowly see that there's some new variation here, and then we ascend up the neck into the higher notes and we get into a more traditional guitar solo. It was just a beautiful way to move into that. Um, and then we did some back and forth. We did, uh, you know, the guitar solo, then we head over to the uh, harsh vocals taking over for eight bars or something and then we go back to our our guitar solo it's really cool is that the final note of the harsh vocals is also the first note of the guitars they come in together so again there's this smoothing over of transition we're passing the baton very cleanly between these two instruments uh between the vocals and the guitar and the voc and the guitarist here says yeah you know you heard some of my melodic, my storytelling writing, but I got some skills too and starts tossing in some shred here. Um, and it's just a really nice way to do what singles and music videos do well, which is showcase the band. You know, as I've said before, music videos and, and singles have a dual purpose. They're both the art of the band, but they're also selling the band. You know, they want to get new fans, new subscribers, new sold merch and CDs, right? You're trying to get more people on board. They have to represent the band. And so a lot of singles will be chosen for palatability or showcasing every aspect of the band, especially the beginnings of songs are really important for singles. You want to get people interested as soon as possible. Like there's a lot of things that go into it other than just the raw art of the music. And I think this song showing off the melodic storytelling style of guitar solo the shred the the raw performance that our guitarist has the dual clean vocals the um melody driven and textural driven uh composition styles like all of it this feels like the band saying this is who we are this is all of our aspects if you get into our album, you'll hear emphasized parts of all of them, but here is everything that we can do. It really feels like throwing everything out there. I mean, that's that's a phenomenal way to go about doing a, a single like this. Um, and it's just, I love it how you kind of split the two solos up in that way, where you kind of get the melodic saying, oh, that was a nice solo. And then you're, you get a second one. You're like, wow, they're going to give me a second one. And then there's like shred in here, you know, getting real technical. Like, yeah, like I, I'm just a huge fan of that. It, it's very tasteful soloing in both sections. And that pretty much wraps up the analysis of this track. I do want to point out one final thing in the last section of the track. I think it was like the last 18, 16 bars. Um, the drums at the end of every phrase, every eight bar phrase, I think it was. Um, for their little drum fill to bring the repetition, you know, to end out the phrase and, re and start it over again, introduced these uh, tuplet ideas that really stretched it out. And I thought it was a really neat idea, given how much drive and intensity the song had throughout everything, that this kind of felt like a winding down. The song's almost over. We're going to slow out some of these parts. Slow out. We're going to slow down some of these parts, stretch them out, and really, you know, rein this song in so we can finish it up. Um, and doing that twice uh, just really cemented that as sort of, uh, you know, songs over, we're winding down a little. I thought it was a great way to to finish the song out and a great time to introduce that. That Those sort of tuplets could have been introduced anywhere in the track. And we kind of got that five tuplet in the beginning. Um, but that really kind of sped things up. That was the opposite, which which is really neat. We started the song with more notes than four in the bar, and we end the song with less than four notes in the beats. Because it wasn't a full bar of, of triplets. It was like a beat or two beats of triplets. But yeah, just a, a really neat idea to go about doing that. So those are my thoughts. 
so far on uh, Pass of the Falls Behold, and I'm really digging the music here. But as usual, let's get into some lyrics and uh, see if we can't tie any of these themes together and see if anything that we heard in the music is represented in the lyrics. So this is going a bit over my head. It seems to be about somebody who is constantly uh, beaten down, constantly taken advantage of, and instead of deciding that this is uh, this is it and just accepting it, they are trying to rise up. Like our, our pre-chorus, I think it's pre-chorus anyways, says right here, life is here, rise, hold again. And there's this idea of, of, you know, taking back your life, of rising up from lying down on the ground, of being beaten while you're down. Um, even the, the third verse that we get after the solos says, uh, skin crawling through my hate, me and you, I can't relate, biting down in the depths of me, power to resurrect and forget, set me free. So this idea of, of just absolutely having nothing in common with those who are beating you down and not even being able to to understand their perspective on it and just waiting for your time to rise up and and escape that's what it seems like to me um which this idea of biding your time and, and waiting it out is i mean it kind of sucks right <laughs> you really have these bigger plans for yourself and you just can't go through with them yet you have to wait for the right time to do that and in that you're being abused and and you know whatever taken advantage of and that sort of melancholic vibe that descent is certainly present in our course while everything else is driving which is that that need that that feeling for purpose of of wanting to push on and get to the next area you know to to break free of this and move on to the next part of your life so yeah i can certainly see that push and pull being present both in the lyrics and the music other than that though uh you know i, I really don't see too many uh connections between the lyrics and the music but as usual that's perfectly fine not every song needs to have this perfect lyrical connection between the two sometimes you just write some killer riffs and you you write some lyrics for it and you just mash them together <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, so those are my thoughts on Past the Falls Beholden. That's where y'all come in. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this or not, anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on. Above that is a description box, and there is a bunch of links for Past the Fall. Their social medias, their streaming platforms, anything I can find that will help you check out more of their music or get in contact with them or purchase merch or media, whatever you're interested in. Those links are there. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Make sure you like or follow or heart or whatever. <laughs> their YouTube, their you know Twitter, whatever you end up going on. Make sure you show them some love as well. All right. We have uh, another creator request today. Also, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, as usual. Till next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.